Welcome to service. We'll be getting soon. Join us. Back to school worship. 9 1 120 p.m. 11 a.m. Connecticut. And good afternoon, once again, everybody. Welcome back to Lebanon on a beautiful September 1st. So we will do the preload intro and then we will get started. Preload is mercy true.
All right. Thank you, Corey. That was very pretty. And it is an endless mercy tree. So today is the first service in three months. Busy doing other things. The semester has begun. However, word study is still up in the air because apparently there was not enough funding to be able to continue on this semester in Willamette. However, since it is still very early, we know that that is, of course, subject to change. Obviously, a new Wilbur is on the way when the time comes as well. I also wanted to make another public service announcement. Every weekend from now until October 15th, the Connecticut Renaissance Fair will make its way to the 11th Fairgrounds, located just around the corner from this studio. So if you are interested in that, people in Lebanon get in for free tomorrow, Saturday, September 2nd. Also, if you live in Franklin, there is a blood drive going on as well. And by the way, if you borrow material from the Lebanon Library and you have and you know it's from a library of the system, you can return it to any library in that in the system and the material will get back to where it belongs, as we found out this week. So we come before him today in this time of back to school, be back to football next weekend as we head towards fall. We are reminded that he is alive even now and through us and showing us all the good news that Jesus gives to us. So receive the call to worship. We look at this world focused on the pain and confusion, the fears and hatred which seem to abound. For what can we hope? We wait breathlessly for the goodness of creation to be made manifest in all the world, for this is the promise of God. God is always with us, guiding, rescuing, healing, and restoring us. Get ready, dear friends. The promises of God are true. Lord, quiet our spirits and open our hearts. Bring us hope and peace. Amen. And you please rise and sing with me, open in hymn 153, worthy of worship. Worthy of worship, worthy of praise, worthy of honor and glory, worthy of all the glad songs we can sing, worthy of all of the offerings we bring. You are worthy, Father, Creator, you are worthy. Savior, sustainer, you are worthy, worthy and wonderful, worthy of worship and praise. Worthy of reverence, worthy of fear, worthy of love and devotion. Worthy of bowing and bending of knees, worthy of all this and added to these, you are worthy, Father, Creator, you are worthy, Savior, Sustainer, you are worthy, worthy and wonderful, worthy of worship and Almighty Father, Master and Lord, King of all kings and Redeemer, Wonderful Counselor, Comfort and Friend, Savior and Source of our life without end, you are worthy. Father, Creator, you are worthy. Savior, Sustainer, you are worthy.
worthy, worthy and wonderful, worthy of worship and praise. Lord, our Heavenly Father, we come before you again after some time away. In this back to school season, we continue to prove you worthy of our worship and praise. Today, by your spirit and your word, be with us as we glorify you now and forevermore. As we continue to find our way and continue to show the world that we are worthy of being in a relationship. So we will glorify you this day and every day. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We will glorify you. We will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. We will glorify the Lord of Lords, who is the Great I Am. Jehovah reigns in majesty. We will bow before his throne. We will worship him in righteousness. We will worship him alone. His Lord of heaven, Lord of earth, he is Lord of all who live. He is Lord above the universe. Praise to him we give. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lord of Lords, who is the Great I Am. All right, thank you. Please be seated. And anthem is a prayer for healing.
All right, thank you, Corey. That was very pretty. And that anthem goes perfectly in, perfectly with the message coming up shortly. We're gonna talk about anxiety in relationship and why people are quick to run when they're dating somebody on the spectrum. But in the meantime, it is operatory time. As you know, in case you remember, we do the operatory before the message. That was something that that was a format change so at this point i invite you to subscribe and to continue to check out some of his other videos that we are working on as well as soon as we get extra money madden 24 will be revealed at the moment we are working with madden 23 basically the same thing so at this point Will the officers please come forward as we receive the afternoon's gifts and offering? And the offertory is Mary New. Like she knew that this was going to happen to him. This is written by Herb Frommatch and Joshua Metzger. So Mary New.
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Lord, it is through your spirit and your word that we know everything is meant to be. Just like your mother knew what was going to happen to you. So take these gifts and multiply them and make yourself known throughout the world. As we try to find our way back to a relationship that appeared to be working and to have and to give to have a change of heart. As we continue our walk in this fall semester to get word study going again and eventually have a new black and white friend to celebrate with. In Jesus name. Amen. Please be seated. All right, so this is the message that I told you about earlier. So we're going to look at Philippians 4, 48. And this will lead into what we will be talking about after. So Philippians 4, 48. Celebrate God all day. Every day, I mean, revealing him. Make it as clear as you can to all you meet that you're on their side. Work with them and not against them. Help them see that the master is about to arrive. He could show up any minute. Don't fret or worry. Instead of worry and pray, let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayer. Letting God know your concerns before you know it. A sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displays his worry at the center of your life. Some of all our friends, I'd say, will do your do best by filling your minds and meditating on all things true, noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious, the best, not the worst. The beautiful, not the ugly, things to praise, not things to curse. Put into practice what you learned from me, what you heard and saw and realized. Do that, and God makes everything work together, will work you into his most excellent harmonies. Here ends the reading, and may God a blessing to the reading of these holy words. So, anxiety in relationships, this is something that we've talked about a lot this summer, and Certainly, it continues to show itself. The reason why this is the message today is based on something that happened last week. So, and again, this is not directed at anybody. So, sit at home, 
doing things that I got to doing things that I had to do was just trying to have a nice evening. But I guess not answering the phone is wrong in somebody's mind. Think about that for a second. If you were busy and you were doing stuff and you didn't check your phone for another app for an hour or an hour and a half, then you wouldn't think that would cause a response that is very, first of all, very extreme. You see, there are times I reach out to people, and sometimes they don't pick up right away. But they, but you should know that they will call you back. It's not like it's not like people don't answer the phone on purpose. Maybe some people do, but sometimes they don't. Sometimes they were just busy, or maybe they maybe they, maybe they were just doing something. Maybe with their loved ones or what have you. But you see, this is really where this comes into play. You can't blame somebody for being on the spectrum. In fact, you can't blame anybody for any sort of medical condition that they may have or they were born with. You can't. It's like they didn't choose to be a certain way. They didn't, they didn't choose to live like that. It just so happened that they do. And people are quick to throw it all away because they don't want to be bothered with actually understanding this picture and seeing that there is a better response to what is what they think is the right response. You know, this is something that it amazes me that it just seems like we see this a lot in general. Not just talking about in gay relationships, I'm talking about in, in just all relationships. Some people can't be bothered. Or some people just don't want to, you know, they don't want to listen to the person on the spectrum to the, they, so that they can voice their opinion or what they think might be an answer. Because that's not what people do. I've seen this happen a lot. And unfortunately, I've been caught in the middle of this. Case in point, remember that 10-1 incident from two years ago? That was one that was one area earlier this year. And now it's it's not having it's not being able to be disciplined enough to just listen to what the other person has to say because maybe what Maybe what somebody on the spectrum thinks might be a better solution. Or they might find that their idea might be interesting. You see, we don't have to explain ourselves to everybody. We don't. We're not children. We can use our God-given common sense. And we know that when we are with somebody... We don't go talking to other people in a certain way. But that doesn't mean we that doesn't mean we don't talk to other people. Here's the thing. Talk to other people can be defined in two ways. One, it's just regular communication, like what we're doing now. Obviously a sermon or a message, or like in regular conversation, if the three of us were here. Myself, mom, and dad. And obviously, grandma, if she was here too. That's one way it's defined. It, but the other way it's defined is sometimes we might start to feel things for others. 
Now this is human this is human behavior. We all want to feel loved and we all want to feel accepted for who we are. And sometimes we might read we might misread the social cues or we might read might misread excuse me <clears throat> sometimes we might misread another person's intent or their actions toward us. You know, Michelle Martin wrote a book called Anxiety in Relationships Called Fear of Abandonment and Insecurity. Where was a good where was a, there was a good point from one side. Another big reason for anxiety in the beginning of the relationship is lack of trust. This is usually a temporary issue as once you start to get to know your partner more, you'll start to trust them. When this happens, a lot of the anxiety you feel in the beginning will start to disappear. It's important to note that you continue to feel anxious because you don't trust your partner. That is a sign of a problem. A few months in the relationship, your trust should be growing stronger. If it's not, you need to reevaluate your relationship. So this is something else that I found fascinating. And this is just in general. Trust is a big thing in every relationship, personally, professionally, everywhere. Now, we have proven that we can be trusted. Okay? So we've proven that we can be trusted because we don't go anywhere. All we do is go to school run errands, just normal things. Well, most, but usually all of the time at home. So why would, so why would you not trust somebody if they've given you every reason to trust them? It's called, it's called they don't want to let their guard down. It basically is them telling you that telling telling you you know i don't trust you or you know i think you're going to do this and you're going to do whatever the case may be you see people are quick to do this because they see the diagnosis they see the diagnosis and they think that you know like oh he doesn't get it or like you know like oh he's going to go do it anyway because he doesn't know that no, no. People on the higher end of the scale do make good choices. Sometimes they may make bad decisions, but most of the time they make good choices and they are extremely loyal to the one that they are with. Meaning that they do everything for them. They make time for them. They go see them in the middle of the night, which has been the case recently. And and they always ask them. You know, they ask them, well, do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? Basically, given choice. But this is not something to hold against somebody. As mentioned at the top, they didn't choose to be this way. They didn't. It's going into it with an open mind and not fretting or fearing that something bad is always going to happen. It's having to be more open minded and to be a little more positive as far as, you know, what the best response is to any situation. It is common that the little things 
and small minute things always irritate people. It's just human nature. That's just, I guess, that's just how it is. Now, my question is, do these people that throw it all away, do they come back to the one that they did, to, to the one that they chose to do this to? Yeah, most of the time they do. Now, I'm not sure that's going to be the case here, but what happens over time is when when we step back and let them get on with it, they start to see that we care. This is not all about one person winning over the other. It's about being equal. It's about being equal. The reason why people are quick or they say stuff like, or they realize that, you know what, I'm not attracted to you. Though. But they realize it far too late. Why? Or they use the term like they force or like you force somebody to do something. You can't force any. No. No. Nobody forces anybody to do anything around here. Mostly, it's you might get, might be very comfortable with somebody. Yes, that is common. But it's not like you're forcing them to be anything with you. Maybe, maybe you just wanted, maybe you just enjoy their company and you just want to, you know, get comfortable, snug up and, you know, maybe watch a movie with them or something like that. So what do we do? What do we do? Well, QBCC is the answer right now. And it'll take time. But I guarantee you, this message will, will probably resonate with a lot of people. This is just the world that we live in, guys. And, you know, unfortunately, that is sort of how dated in 2023 is. We can't be blamed for things. That, here are the things that we've learned from professionals. We cannot we cannot be blamed for things that we know we don't do in our hearts. So if we only answer the phone, it doesn't mean we're doing anything bad. It just means that we're in the middle of doing something. Or maybe we just did not feel like talking. It doesn't mean it does it does not mean that something bad is happening. Or maybe they just didn't hear the phone ring. That's number one. Number two, we have to know our worth. Hence why the opening hymn was worthy of worship. We have to know that we are worthy to be with somebody that respects us and accepts us for who we are. No medical condition defines an individual. No, they don't. Autism is just, it's just, the brain is just wired differently. Three, it's having a more appropriate response to everyday situations. Not going off the handle. Now, really, this started when they said that, you know, I, 
when they said, I'm going to go home for afterwards, you know, and I'll talk to you tomorrow or I'll see you tomorrow. Well, really? Well, yeah. It's like, okay. Like, okay, you know, I'll talk to you later or see you tomorrow. See, you would think that was that would have been like, you know what? We'll just have to find some, we'll just find something else to do. Simple things like this are the reasons why these sorry, sorry in my eye. Are the reasons why these situations happen is because it's like the other person does not know. Again, we're talking about person A and person B. This is how the world is. This is us not ignoring them. This is us not going out of our way to hurt them. This is us not. This is showing the opposite of what they think of us. Do I think that do I think that, you know, that a lot of people do this? Absolutely. I'm sure there is somebody else doing this right now. You know, I've read online on Quora where people post a question and then they and then somebody answers it. I've been reading, and this is a con this has been a common problem this year. I don't know if it was after the pandemic, people or people just, just going crazy out there. But this is us understanding that knowing our worth and knowing who we are and having having just and having to be disciplined enough to tell them if they start something with you, just tell them I'm not going. Just tell them I'm not going to get into it. And you just leave it at that. Or you just tell them, or you just tell them, when you decide to talk to me normally, then we'll talk. Until then, you just put the phone down. Put the phone down, and you just get on with it, and you just move on. You don't have to feed into them. You don't have to feed into anybody doing this to you. This is the other thing we are learning. Throughout this whole experience, we're learning how to sort of convey our way through a situation without us going to the far extreme. Some people have never been told no. Some people think that they are entitled But this is, but having a foundation of trust is going to be absolutely critical this semester if this is allowed to go on. Time will tell. But the one relationship that does, that does not end, or two of them, the one that we have with ourselves. And the one that and the one who we've come and worship today. And as we come to his table, he will be washing our feet and he'll serve us the bread and the cup. Amen. Hear my prayer.
Lord, this afternoon we come before you sometimes fretting and worrying of things that are, might happen or things that are to come. We know your mother knew of what was going to happen to you long before the angel came and said, be not afraid. I should say long before it, the event occurred. Why is there so much anxiety and fret and worry in relationships? Aren't relationships supposed to be fun? Aren't you supposed to get to know each other and, and just have a good time? Without getting into it, especially over things that really don't matter. Who would have thought not hearing from somebody is a sign to go off the deep end? We know how hard it is in, in this world to maintain a relationship. We know how hard it is to even find somebody good to date in 2023. But we just pray that the one that we've been blessed to know and spend time with would just take a step back and give himself a break from the fret and the worry and the anxieties and Everything else that might be at work. For we know that you have the answer. And the answer right now is going to school. We pray that that job finds a way to resume and to continue. <sighs> We pray for all the survivors in Maui, Hawaii, and Florida after the hurricane earlier this week. We pray that our government makes better choices in helping those from natural disasters. We pray that a new Wilbur comes. And for the viewers at home, we pause and give you the chance to lift up those that you know. And so it's to this end, as we come to your table, we know we are worthy of you, and we know that you will continue to serve the bread and cup now and forevermore. As it is in that prayer that you tell us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Communion him as comes to the Lord. We gather here. Here in Jesus' name, his love is burning in our hearts like living flame. For through the love and Son, the Father makes us one. Come take the bread, come drink the cup, come share the Lord. No one is a stranger here. And Finding our forgiveness here, we in turn forgive all wrongs. He joins us here. 
he breaks the bread. The Lord who pours the cup is risen from the dead. The one we love the most is now our gracious host. Come take the bread, come drink the cup, come share the Lord. We are now a family of which the Lord is head. The city meets us here in the breaking of the bread. We'll gather soon where angels say we'll see the glory of our Lord and come in coming care. Now we anticipate the feast for which we wait. Come take the bread, come drink the cup, come share the Lord. Give and forget. My life is good. 
So on the night he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread, he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Do, do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup, and after blessing it, he said, In this cup with the new covenant of my blood, which is poured out for you. So as often as we eat of the bread and we drink from the cup, we reminded that he is the living Christ, who is alive even now in 2023, and continues to show us our way through anxiety, worry, fret, and everything else that life throws at us. And it's through the bread and the cup and this table, and it's a wonderful reminder of what he did for us. Amen. Close to him is this is my father's world. One forty three. This is my father's world, and to my listening ears. All nature sings, and round me rings the music of the spheres. This is my father's world. I rest me in the thought of rocks and trees, of skies and sea. They his hands the wonders rub. This is my father's world, the birds their carols raise, the morning light, the lily white, declare their maker's praise. This is my father's world, he shines in all that's fair. In the rustling grass I hear him pass, he speaks to me everywhere. This is my father's world, oh let me there forget, that though the rod seems off so strong, God is the ruler yet. This is my father's world, the battle is not done. Jesus who died shall be satisfied, in earth and have be one. Receive the advantage. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he help you understand that sometimes there is nothing to worry about, as he is the one that came to save us, who is alive even now. And as we leave this sacred place today, may this table be a reminder of what he did for us. So from all of us here, please be safe this hell this Labor Day weekend. And have a good time as we in, as we wind down the summer of 2023. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let us now depart in peace. Who in thy name are gathered here? This was the brightness of thy face. Let me forever near. Ah. Uh -huh.